Hi and welcome to this Fusion 360 tutorial. Today we're going to look at the filler and chamfer features within Fusion 360. As you can see on screen, I've created four challenges or techniques, which is either going to introduce or develop your existing knowledge and skills associated with the filler and chamfer features. If you need any of the documentation, completed models associated with these activities, you can find those in the description below. So what we're going to do is jump over to Fusion 360 and have a go at these challenges. So as you can see on screen, I've got a design here which I created in the extrude videos. So if you haven't seen that, then please check out those videos. So this design was created, as you can see, using these stages on screen. And what I've done, which is a little bit different from the extrude, is that I've added a number of fillets. So fillet is where you round an edge, basically, as you can see there. So if I zoom in, you can see from the design I did originally, I've rounded these edges off. And it's quite straightforward and a powerful tool. So there are three main reasons why you would add fillets or chamfers. The first one is aesthetics. So if you actually look at this design here compared to the design without fillets, you would say that the design with fillets, okay, looks a lot better, okay? So aesthetically, it looks better. So that's one reason you might want to add fillets or chamfers to your design. The second reason is if you're designing a product that uh, is gonna be interacting with a customer, so a person's actually going to hold this design, then from a ergonomic and safety point of view, adding fillets or chamfers improves the ergonomics and safety aspect. So one, if you're designing, say, a, a grip for a handlebar, if you round that off, okay, that's gonna make it easier to grip. Also, it's gonna make it safer as well. So if you imagine that I designed this sort of a little toy for a child, if this is made out of plastic, then that edge there or any of these other edges, okay, are going to be very, very sharp, especially if it's made from an injection molded product. All right, they're going to be really sharp. So that's adding something that we don't want to the product. So that's another reason why you might add, okay, fillets and chamfers. And the third reason, and is if we look at this example here, during the manufacturing process, whether it's going to be injection molding, okay, vacuum forming, or any other different processes that are out there, okay, fillets and chamfers are added for a number of different reasons. So this design here, as you can see, is for a vacuum former. So we would form plastic over this design here. And the reason why fillets, okay, these round, rounded edges are added, okay, in the vacuum forming, is the one, it makes the plastic, which goes around this, okay, easier, okay, to remove. So once you've formed the plastic around it, it's far easier to remove that. And secondly, in this particular process, by right, adding fillets like this, also, okay, stops the plastic from splitting, tearing, or webbing. And I'll go through that in a future video when we look at designing you know, formers for vacuum forming. So there are a number of different reasons why you might add, okay, fillets and chamfers. So if we come back to the design that we created in the extra videos, what we're going to do now is add a series of fillets for this first activity. The fillet tool can be located under modify. So we've got fillet here, and it gives you a bit of a preview showing you how to use the tool or what the result is at the end after using it. And we've also got fillet at the top. And as you can see here, F is the shortcut on the keyboard. So if I press F, it comes up with the options. So in the options, you can see here, we have a number of different things that we can select. What we're gonna do for this first exercise is keep it quite simple. We're just going to use a fillet, so a bog standard fillet, and we're going to use what's called a constant. 
So what that means is when I add a fillet, it would be constant in terms of its size and shape all the way along an edge. And later on, I will show you how you can add, okay, variable fillets, which is another technique. So we're going to select, okay, the outer to start with, these outer edges. So I'm going to hold control to select more than one. And if I type in a dimension, you will see it will give me a preview and the dimension appears up here. And what I can continue to do is hold control. And Fusion is quite clever. It can see sort of through objects and I can select these edges at the back and this one down here. And I'm going to continue to go around and select those. I could do those individually, but I want all them to be the same. Okay, and that's really important. I'm grouping them all together. So therefore, later on, if I change it, okay, or change the dimension, all of this will change. So you can see here, if I type in, okay, five, for example, all of them are changing in one go. So I'm not doing individual fillets, I'm doing a selection, okay? So what we've done there, we've added, okay, 10 millimeter round onto these edges, okay? And we've used something called a constant. And that's it. So there you go, you can see I've rounded that off. That's quite straightforward. If I go back into there and edit, what I can do is add an extra selection. So I can add some extra fillets into these holes here. But what's really important is when I select these, and I go around holding control again, selecting all these edges, I can now, because I've click the plus, this is adding an extra set. So I can now add a different dimension to that set. And as you can see, that round is slightly smaller, okay, or that fillet is slightly smaller to the one I on the outside. So you see I've created two sets there within the same feature. And I could click okay. All right, what you could do, what some people do is they come here like this, they press F, they add, a filler, click OK. You go into fill it again. You add another filler. All right, you do get the same result, but what you'll end up having all the way along the bottom here is that you will have 10, 15 different fillets. And it's a lot easier, especially, okay, if you're adding a lot of fillets in a design, is to group them together as we've done here. Now, the other thing we're going to have a look at, if I go into edit, especially for this one here, we've got the 12 edges, is the option at the bottom. So the, the default option is to use what's called a rolling ball. So this joint here, if you can imagine, okay, as a rolling ball in terms of its shape, this joint here. If you go into what's called a setback, it will then change, okay, the design of the corner. It sets back the, the radiuses Okay, or fill it a little bit further back if you flip between the two, you'll see like that. Okay, so aesthetically, you know, depends on your opinion, you may say that, for example, the setback is more aesthetically pleasing. Okay, but it's up to you which sort of option you choose. But like I say, you've got different options in there for creating, especially on corners, different sort of ending shapes as you can see here and I've applied that all the way around okay because it's part of that selection if I wanted for some reason this point here to be different to that one then I would have to okay deselect some of the edges and do that as a separate set and of course if you've done something wrong you could just click on the X to remove that so that's the first simple one just to get our heads around what is okay a fillet Thanks for watching and if you found this content helpful please click like and subscribe and also check out any other resources and videos created using the links in the description. I'll see you on the next one.